Hey guys, Underground Geek here. So, a couple people on Twitter have been talking more about uh, the Shadow and Batman, and it really got to me got me to thinking that we haven't done a review of this series, Batman and the Shadow. Um, and I can't believe I totally forgot about this because I have been reading this. Uh, I've been I've read every issue up till now. And it's one of my favorite series. And so I guess I just didn't say anything about it because, you know, nobody else had really brought it up. And I kind of forgot to mention it. But this is one of my favorite series right now in the DC line. Um, I pretty much read everything DC. I've had to cut back on some of them just because I can't read everything, you know, when it comes out. I just don't have time. So I had to pick out the best ones. And uh, this is one of the ones that I've been reading. Now, I have always liked The Shadow. I've liked The Shadow ever since I was a kid, and that movie came out with Alec Baldwin in it. Uh, he was one of my favorite superheroes, because he was like a combination of Batman and Dick Tracy, uh, except he was a psychopath. And to me, that was just really fun. Like, when he starts doing that laugh, it, it, is just, it got me every time. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you knew crap was about to go down. Okay, so. This is issue number one, and by the way, I just watched this movie the other day, and it was actually really good, so you need to watch it. King Arthur, like it was, it was really cool. I liked it. I liked the style that they did with it. Um, so it starts out, Batman has uh, hiked up to this uh, like fortress, and it's kind of like, it, it reminded me a lot of Ra's al Ghul's uh, assassin kind of background, but instead you've got this Descartes guy and apparently um, he trained Batman, so I don't know if this version of Batman was still trained by uh, the League of Assassins, but, and I just noticed, look at those goggles. They're Batman goggles. That's awesome, I need that now. But anyway, so he catches Batman off guard just as he got to the uh, fortress, But because of course this guy's the master, you know, he's sitting there, got a cup of wine in his hand and he still got him caught off guard. So anyway, uh, Batman's there because he needs his advice. And so then we cut to this scene here where uh, it's Arkham Asylum, and we've got this worker here, and uh, he says, I'm just doing the rounds, Aaron, just doing the rounds. And he goes through here and he says, everybody deserves a good meal. So he's handing out all the meals to all the different uh, villains. Uh, you've got uh, Poison Ivy here, you got Mr. Zeus. I, I forgot all about this guy. You've got uh, Two-Face going ham. And you even got uh, Mr. Freeze here, but for a second I, I thought he was Mr. Manhattan. And then I saw the eyes and the glasses. I was like, oh, okay. But it was just really weird to see him in his underwear. Should have had like some kind of uh, maybe uh, a onesie suit or something, or maybe just regular convict clothes. Just threw me off. Still cool. But anyway, this guy, he seems like a nice dude, goes home, pets his dog. He's got a handicapped dog. How much sadder could this story be? His freaking dog's even handicapped. So he's eating his lunch, having a good time. It's a long day. And then there's somebody coming in the door here, or coming in the window. And they come to there, they stab him. He's dead now. Now who's gonna take care of this poor dog? That's what I'm worried about. That's the real questions. I'm asking the real questions here. Who's gonna take care of this dog? So anyway, the police come in. They're, they're casing the scene. Obviously the guy's dead. Um, they're talking about, uh, don't, don't blaspheme captain. Happen, haven't had a real bagel since the transfer from Soho. What do you want? I need time with the body alone. So she knew she could already tell Batman was here. And look at that entrance. That is freaking awesome. I love the way they draw his cape in this comic book. So anyway, we cut to this good scene here. And I love the way they have Batman drawn in this comic book. Because he's he's obviously very muscular. But they, draw, they, they drew him kind of... Uh, uh, the proportions a little bit off, more comic-y like. But then he's got the old school horn, uh, ears on his... Man, so it's pretty cool. It goes with the shadow deal. But anyway, so we've got him scanning the area. He's figuring out what all has happened. And uh, all of a sudden, um, 
he hears something behind him and it, I think it's it may be the killer still and anyway they're laughing all crazy like but it turns out that it's actually the shadow and uh, he thinks that this guy is the murderer because he has the same kind of knife I think maybe he had his own knife or uh, maybe he picked the weapon up but anyway he goes after the shadow the shadow's escaping of course uh, you don't mess with the shadow dude all right, so Batman's after him. And this is another cool scene. Look how he's drawn, his cape is drawn. I mean, this is just cool. I like all the colors with the new suit. Who else likes the new Rebirth suit? Let me know. But I love all the colors now. It's not just, it's not just black now. Like this, some of the versions are a little bit darker, but there's a lot of other colors going on, purples and blues and yellows. Uh, but you got a cool fight scene going on here. Very old school comic style. Uh, they're doing pretty well against each other. He does a Hadouken right here. Uh, and uh, he cracks him real good right there. He's still fighting him. Now, the thing about the shadow is a lot of times you don't know what you're fighting because he can kind of turn himself into a shadow. And then we got this awesome scene here. The shadow knows. That was his catchphrase way back when. He would always say that. Well, the shadow knows. And it was his own persona. But you got all this laughing going on. Um, and then he's just like, wait, what? Wait, what? So anyway, then he just disappears. He, he doesn't know what, and, and that's a big deal. You need to think about that, that's a big deal. He just escaped from Batman. So he's more stealthy than Batman at this point. So Batman's got this cool scene here where he's evaluating the knife. And it's gonna be the same kind of knife uh, that the Shadow and the Killer both have. So obviously they probably know each other. Uh, but this was kind of an awkward scene because he doesn't have his belt on. So it's like he's in a big uh, bodysuit and he almost looks naked. It was just funny. Uh, but anyway here, uh, he's finding out more about the shadow because obviously he's been looking him up. He's, he's running known associates. So this is where he goes on the, uh, the prowl kind of investigating the situation. Um, and the, what the shadow does is he gets people, he saves their lives, and then he turns around and uses them kind of like uh, indentured servants, you know, earning back their freedom. And he gives them all these rings that they can kind of get a hold of him with. And uh, so he's, he's tracking all these people down, trying to find out where he's at. So this is a big deal here because he actually goes and sees Margot. And Margot was uh, the Shadow's love interest way back when, but the Shadow doesn't really age like they do. He ages a little bit slower thanks to his, thanks to his abilities. So Margot's uh, nice and old now. I really didn't recognize her at first. Uh, he's asking her questions about that, and she's obviously upset. She, like, she doesn't like the Shadow at this point because he's kind of abandoned her. And uh, so he doesn't really get that much information out of her. And this is, this is Bruce Wayne, by the way. He's wearing a disguise, pretty cool disguise, huh? And uh, so he's, uh, he's trying to get information out of everybody. It threw me off at first. I forgot it was him because he looked so different. I, I didn't pay attention when he changed into his costume. So, oh, well, we got some fighting going on here now. Uh, this guy is obviously after him because he's not wearing his ring. So he's not helping the shadow. He's uh, probably trying to kill the shadow. Um, let's see we've waited decades my father my grandfather the master said you'd come the master well I guess he is then because he called him the master that's what they all call him so anyway he knocks him down like he's nothing gets in the room starts doing more investigating uh, sees old pictures of him and then he hears a noise Um, yep, he figured, he figured it out. So there he goes, he's, uh, he's gotten into the secret room now. So now he's kind of in the shadow's back cave. The shadow has all these different disguises that he can wear. Uh, it says, I knew all Lamont's faces, Shadow, Kent, Allard, Young, Ying Ko, and more. So he mentioned Ying Ko, huh? that's a cool, that was his old name. The shadow's old name, Ying Ko. He was like a warlord. So anyway, he finds his armory and he's got more of those knives. So obviously, you know, they're not that unique, uh, but he's got one of those cool swords that they're gonna talk about later. Uh, he's run a, uh, 
a scan now on the daggers. It's, it's the same kind of dagger. Uh, the training sword, Brazilian rosewood, one of the rarest, hardest uh, species of wood in the world. So that kind of lets him know that something's up, that there's a connection between him and the shadow. Uh, the, this is kind of off right here, but I think he's wearing like a lot of uh, cold gear, so it kind of makes him look a little bit thicker, but it's just a little strange with him walking like that. So he's, he's asking D uh, Ducard more questions about the shadow. He says, help me find the shadow. He says, the wooden sword, the strict contester, it was all it took for me to beat you uh, back then, Bruce. You can still see, I can still see you fumbling with the chisel and planes, gouging the wood. You were desperate to make one of your own. But you were uh, cutting against the grain, working against yourself. You never stopped working against the grain. It's there you see something's happening. Uh, Bruce, you think Cranston was my student. You seek the shadow. Don't worry. He's closer than you think. So th I just realized that this was a, a Scott Snyder story, which is another reason why it's probably good. But we get this great scene here that ends the first issue. And uh, so you got the shadow coming out uh, in the summer of 2017. Of course, it's out now. Because we're like four or five issues into the shadow. Uh, but this is just a really good story. Like I've, I've read every one of these up till now. And uh, the villain's really creepy looking. And uh, the Batman and the Shadow are not really getting along right now because they both are pretty much the same person. And uh, he really is mad now that he didn't know that he was the Shadow and though he was his uh, teacher. Uh, but I really like the art in these comics. I really like all of the uh, covers. And later on, the Joker's going to get involved, so it's going to turn into a really good series, and you need to check this out. Um, I'll probably give this like an 8 out of 10. I give the artwork like a 9 out of 10. I really like the artwork. Uh, but I might be a little bit biased just because I love the shadow and love Batman so much, and they combine them together. I mean, that's the best. It'd be like combining uh, Spawn and uh, Ghost Rider together. I mean, I'd just be like, ah! But anyway, tell me what you think. Tell me about my review. Give me a thumbs up. Um, let me know what else you want me to review. And hit the notifications button so you can get all my videos. All right, guys. Underground Geek, out.